Hello my friends, welcome back to Keto in the Chaos. My name is Tammy and on this channel I like to share all my tips and tricks on how I lost 200 pounds without bariatric surgery and how you can be successful on your own weight loss journey. So if that's what you're looking for, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for more videos like this one to inspire you to get started. Hello and Happy New Year, everyone. I am so glad that you stopped to check in on me on my new journey for 2023. As you guys know, weight loss is a never ending story. I always have something going on. I always have a plan in place for what my next phase in the journey is going to be. I do not wanna go back to being 374 pounds. I do not wanna go back to how I felt at the beginning of my weight loss journey, which is not even on this channel because I didn't even know that weight loss journeys on YouTube was a thing when I started my journey. I didn't even start putting videos on this channel until I had lost my first 100 pounds and the only reason I started making videos was because I wanted to help teach you how to do what I was having great success in doing. And I have continued to use those practices every time that I have tried to lose weight or every time that I've wanted to cut some body fat. I've used the same exact principles every single time and they just always, always work. The reason they work is twofold. Number one reason is because it's a calorie deficit. With a calorie deficit, it doesn't matter how you achieve it. If you burn more calories than your body consumes, than you take into your body, you will lose body fat. Now, there are some exceptions to that rule. Of course, if you have lipedema fat, that usually just stays no matter what. It seems to be kind of permanent unless you have certain kinds of liposuction. But for the most part, for most people, if you wanna lose weight, you just need to eat less. And so that is the reason that my diet, my keto diet has worked is because I also pair it with a good calorie deficit. The second reason that it works is because ketosis kind of keeps you in a hunger removed state. Now, when you're watching these videos of mine, you may or may not think that I feel hunger removed. <laughs> Let's just say the first couple of weeks as you get started on keto, especially if you not, are not significantly overweight anymore, it's a struggle. It is still a struggle. Like just like any other diet, it's a struggle to stick to and it's a struggle to get going on. So. I decided because my life is so crazy in the months of March to May that the only really time I have in order to try and progress on my weight loss journey is for a few weeks in the beginning of the year and then over the summer. And for the last few years, that's kind of where I've fallen into this groove where over the summer I will cut and at the beginning of the year I will choose to do a quick cut in order to try and keep continuing on my journey. Now, I have a lot going on besides just weight loss. I had plastic surgery to remove some of my loose skin um, back in 2021. And that kind of threw a wrench into the whole thing because then I ended up with lymphedema and discovered that I also had lipedema in my legs. So some of the fat in my legs are, is not removable by diet and exercise, which is disappointing. And when I had my surgery, I also got swelling because my lymphatic system was damaged and just apparently I'm just one of those lucky ones that doesn't heal up perfectly so that my lymphatic system doesn't work. I personally believe that I had a form of lymph lymphedema and swelling before. You know, if you've watched my channel for years, you'll know I often have big swings of water weight, even when on keto. And I think a lot to do with that is my lymphatic system just doesn't work, maybe as well as some other people. So a lot of times on the scale, I'll have dramatic drops on the scale and people get so excited for me. And then a lot of times on the scale, I'll have dramatic increases and people are like, what are you eating? With me, it doesn't always, it doesn't always work that way. And so I go by my average weight for the week over time. And I really have to look at it over a long period of time to see rather than just day to day basis and base what I ate, like whether it affected me or whatever, because it takes some time with me. It really takes some time. And so after my plastic surgery, it's been about 18 months now, I have put on 
a lot of water weight that just will not go away. So I gained 30 pounds the first week after my surgery and I've only ever been able to really lose 10. I've been hovering at about 20 pounds up since my surgery 18 months ago and really haven't had a lot of success really digging into that. So I'm guessing it might just be around to stay. But that being said, I'm always going to keep first of all moving forward on my journey and secondly keeping myself in check so that I don't end up saying screw it and going back to the 374 pound woman that I do not want to be. So if you're here in 2023, I am welcoming you here. I am so grateful to have you. This video series is going to be a very quick keto cut, which means I'm going to be doing a very significant calorie deficit. During the holidays and when I wasn't tracking, it's a good chance I was eating between 2,300 calories and 3,000 calories a day. Um, I did put on some weight during the holidays and during that time, but when I'm doing that, when I'm eating a lot of food and I'm um, putting a little bit of body fat on, I'm also healing my metabolism. And one of the main things that people mess up when they diet is that they diet really drastically, they lose the weight they want to lose, and then they go back to eating a lot of food too quickly, don't let their metabolism cut, catch up, gain back some weight really quick, panic, and then dive back into a calorie deficit and basically live in and out of a calorie deficit for years and years and years, and that's where your metabolism struggles. But if you're capable of doing a really steep calorie deficit in some parts of the year, and then having lots of months where you're not stressing if you put on a few pounds and you have your calories up, your metabolism will be able to recover. That way, whenever you do a cut, you'll get more done in a shorter amount of time than you would if you were constantly eating 1,200 calories every day for years. I hope that makes sense. I really should do a video that explains that a little bit better, but I do want to make that clear that what I am doing, these phases, these diet phases, they are not yo-yo dieting. This is a different thing. This is having a goal based on the season. So for me, dance competition season starts in March and I also am a dance photo photographer. So I spend hours and hours and hours editing photos, taking photos, going to competitions, out of the house, don't really have a lot of time for myself and I really, really, really do not wanna to have to think about my diet. So I try to do lazy keto as best I can and sometimes I will add carbs in. We'll see what happens this year. I know from experience that that is coming and this year proves to be the biggest year of all because one of my daughters joined another dance team. So I have extra, extra dance competitions that I did not have in the past. So it's going to be even crazier than it was before. And I know that's coming. Also, I like to really take it easy during the holidays. I also am a, a holiday dance photographer and that's another busy season for me. And so I really like to not have to think about what I'm eating in the holidays, like to indulge in a few things here and there. We're not talking like, you know, binging on boxes of donuts like I did when I was 374 pounds. We're talking about here and there a piece of, of Christmas candy or a piece of Halloween candy or extra sweet potatoes or sweet potatoes with sugar on Thanksgiving. We're not talking about like binging. I'm not binging anymore. Um, I do overeat. I just tend to. I have ADHD. It was not diagnosed until October, but I have had it my whole life. And that is now at least illuminating to me so that I understand that the reason I crave chewing and feeling full was because growing up, those were the things that I used to help manage my ADHD symptoms. I'm finding new ways to deal with it. I am seeing a therapist. I am taking um, ADHD medication now. Um, I still am struggling really a lot with anxiety, which is kind of what held me back during the holidays with editing my channel. I was having a really, really difficult time with both making myself do things, which is an ADHD thing, and all ADHD thing, and also stopping my anxiety from stopping me from doing it. Because if, if there wasn't anybody making me do it, my anxiety was really holding me back. It was rough. I don't know why I've been struggling with it so much. I've debated going on anxiety medications, but I've decided not to because I'm trying to lose weight. But I will tell you this, being on a calorie deficit triggers my anxiety something fierce. Being hungry triggers my problem situation. <laughs> and so when I'm on a cut, especially when I'm smaller like this, it's harder, it's a lot harder to cope emotionally, physically, everything like that. 
So there's your little lay of the land of where we're starting for the year. My ultimate plan would be to go all the way to March with this cut, but I have a feeling that's not gonna make, I won't make it that long. But what I am doing is a 1300 calorie keto cut focusing on protein. My ideal protein goal will be 130 grams or more a day. The reason I do that is because if I can consume a lot of high protein foods, that's gonna keep me satiated longer, keep the hunger at bay, keep those anxiety symptoms a little bit lower than they would be, say, eating um, 1,300 calories of carbs, which would make me more hungry and make it harder for me to keep up with. <laughs> um, I'm also going to be focusing on keeping the carbs below 20, but, some days I'm gonna allow up to 30 if I'm feeling like it's working in my calories. I'm not being super strict. And the main reason I'm doing keto this time, besides the hunger killing, which it does help with, I am doing it because it seems that my lymphedema, my swelling post plastic surgery, is heavily exacerbated by eating carbs, which I discovered this last fall, which is a super big bummer. Because while I did swell with carbs before I had the surgery, it was not nearly this bad, this much, or this uncomfortable. So I may not be keto forever, but for a most part of my life, I'm probably gonna end up staying pretty low carb because of that reason. And this condition, lymphedema, is permanent. I will not ever heal from this condition. I have a lot I have need to do to manage it, um, most of which are inconvenient. I don't enjoy having to deal with that, let's put it that way. But I do enjoy how I look, and even though I'm two sizes bigger than I was pre-surgery, I still love having a flat stomach and being able to see, at least in the mornings, my abs. <laughs> I cannot see them by the evening because I've swollen with the lymphedema so badly. It's really terrible. So anyway, I know I've talked your ear off. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you everything that I ate this week in order to lose weight on a ketogenic cut with a protein focus. And so I am gonna show you literally everything I ate. I didn't hide anything, I didn't leave anything out. You know why? It was super easy because I'm hardly eating anything at all because 1300 calories is not very much food. Let's put it that way. And I'm also gonna be showing you my weigh-ins every day and then a 360 body view before and after of the week to see if there was any changes. Most of the time you're not gonna see any changes, but I do film those for me because I am able to really look at them carefully and see if I see any change and it always helps, keeps me motivated if I see changes. Um, I'm also measuring myself and I take the average weight for the week and that's what I go by. There's lots of little tricks that I do in order to lose weight pretty quickly get in there, get it done, and get out is my is my mantra. So because I was eating so heavily the calories before I started, I should have a pretty good calorie deficit here going into this thing. Plus, going on to keto after eating carbs, especially with my lymphedema, I guarantee you there's gonna be a huge drop in water weight this first week. So you're gonna see that on the scale as well, as well as um, all of my exercise classes and the things that I do for fun and to keep myself um, motivated. I am literally just going to show it to you all in one big long clip and I hope that works for you and I will check back in with you at the end to talk about how it went and give you all the data. hating being a chicken farmer right now and chickens are hating living right here right now they got no food no water they can't get to it so I'm just out here doing the best I can and I'm out here 
dumping 12 inches of snow off of the barrels. And I decide I'm looking for my bowl because I cannot find it. It's somewhere in the snow. I don't know where to scoop the food out. And so I looked, then I just thought, oh, you know what? I should look over here and just see if any of the chickens have been like hiding out over here or whatever. And look what I just found. Sorry if I'm just filming my mouth. I do that. But look what I just found. Yeah. Seriously? Gotta be kidding me. Why? Alrighty guys, welcome back. It is the first day of my keto cut for 2023 and I am having my first meal of the day at 2.20. And I am having, this is ice cream I made um, with the Ninja Creamy. It is basically frozen yogurt. Yeah, it melted a bit while I was cooking my other stuff. I won't make, hopefully not make that mistake again, but it's one serving of keto chow. Well, one scoop of keto chow mixed with 250 grams of Greek yogurt. Um, 120 grams of Califia Farms almond coconut milk, and I just mixed it up, froze it, put it in the creamy, so that hopefully it's going to be good. And then I'm having two eggs, 40 grams of mozzarella cheese that I just fried up in a nonstick pan, and 40 grams of bacon. That's going to be my first meal of the day. Alrighty, everyone, it is a little after 7 on Monday, and I'm about to have my, my second meal of the day. I am having broccoli chicken alfredo. This is 155 grams of broccoli, six ounces of chicken breast, 120 grams of Bertoli alfredo sauce, 20 grams of mozzarella cheese, and that is going to be my last meal of the day. Alrighty guys, it is Tuesday and it is 1.40 and I'm having my first meal of the day. I am having more um, creamy ice cream. This is just a keto chow, one scoop of keto chow mixed with a little bit of coconut milk or coconut almond milk and water. And I froze it and the creamy made it into ice cream. I don't know if it's going to taste good, but I'm going to eat it. I guess it makes the keto chow go down slower, that's for sure. And I'm having 60 grams of froze, of fried cheese, not frozen, <laughs> I hope not, two eggs and 37 grams of bacon. That is going to be my first meal of the day. Alrighty guys, it is Tuesday night. It is 8.45. I just got back from dance and I am having my last meal of the day. Tonight I'm having Quest Chip Nachos, so it's two cups of lettuce, one package of Quest Chips, 30 grams of cheddar cheese, um, 150 grams of cooked 85-15 ground beef, and 60 grams of salsa. That's going to be my last mm -hmm. meal of the day. Alrighty guys, it is 2.30 on Wednesday. Wednesdays are my busiest days, but I have found that I have about an hour between 2 and 3 that I can cook and make food and feed the chickens. Sorry if I'm or out of breath. I literally just ran to my room because I'm trying to eat as fast as I can because then I gotta go pick up my kids. But I'm alone. It's weird. I am having two eggs, five ounces of Christmas ham that's still left over. It's probably still good. I hope so. And I don't know what happened to my mozzarella cheese, but it's 50 grams of mozzarella cheese. It's still wiggly and yet black. Super strange. And a built bar. And that is going to be my first meal of the day.
Alrighty guys, it's 10 o'clock on Wednesday night. Just got home from dance about a half hour ago and I'm about to have my final meal of the day. I'm having Lucini Linguini. So this is one can of Lucini Linguini noodles with 150 grams of Rayo's marinara, 200 grams of ground beef, 85-15 ground beef, and 155 grams of green beans. 20 grams of mozzarella on top and that is going to be my last meal of the day. Alrighty guys, it is one o'clock on Thursday and I'm about to have my first meal of the day. I made some more creamy ice cream. This is Keto Chow Root Beer Float um, protein powder. I mixed it with water. I did 62 grams of the protein powder and I um, put in one tablespoon of heavy cream, made it in the creamy. Um, this is two eggs, 30 grams of center cut bacon, and 40 grams of mozzarella cheese fried in a pan. And that's going to be my first meal of the day. Alrighty guys, it's 8.30 on Thursday and I'm about to have my final meal of the day. I am having hamburger salad. <laughs> so basically this is 47 grams of lettuce topped by 30 grams of pickles. I've also got two Great Value brand 85-15 patties on here and two thin sliced ch cheddar Sargento cheddar slices. On top, I've got mustard and 15 grams of G. Hughes sweet chili dipping sauce. And I'm also going to be having a package of Quest chips. And that is going to be my last meal of the day. Alrighty, guys. It is 2.30 on Friday. Just got back from taking my kids to an indoor playland kind of thing. And I'm about to have my first meal of the day. Today I am having 40 grams of mozzarella cheese and two eggs and my keto sludge. My whipped cream has kind of deflated because it's been a while since I made it. But this is 250 grams of Greek yogurt mixed with one scoop or 32 grams of Ascent protein powder. You can use any kind of protein powder you want. I put in two capfuls of lemon juice, two squirts of lemonade Mio water enhancer, 30 grams of almond milk to thin it out. And on top I have... 40 grams of blueberries, and 26 grams of Great Value brand sugar-free whipped cream. And that is going to be my first meal of the day. Alrighty, guys. It is 8 o'clock on Friday, and I'm having my final meal of the day. This is Hawaiian Haystacks Keto Style. So it's 155 grams of cauliflower rice topped with gravy made from xanthan gum, bouillon, and 8 ounces of chicken breast. I've got 40 grams of cheddar cheese on top, 60 grams of tomatoes, 12 grams of slivered almonds, and a tablespoon of green onions. And that is going to be my last meal of the day. Morning guys, it is Saturday and I am out and about. I just dropped my daughter Ruby off at a birthday party and I am heading into Target because Bill Barr sent me a little gift. D. Um, they sent me firstly a gift card to Target for 50 bucks and also a Stanley. I have this baby filled with Eight cups of Creole brew and 20 grams of um, Perfect Keto protein powder. And the reason I'm drinking so much, and I'm just going to take it with me all day, which is so conveniently, such convenient timing because this arrived yesterday. Um, I'm only doing one meal today because we have a party, and so I am going to try and hold off eating. And I think the party is pretty early, so we probably eat around five, I think. I'm not sure. So, yeah. I'm going to go spend my $50 at Target. I can't decide if I'm going to do makeup or clothes. Tough decisions. And thank you, Bill Bar. That was a super nice Christmas present for being the top 27 to 50 sellers in the company. I think last year I was in the top 25, but they really haven't given us very many opportunities for sales and like stuff this year. They've made it hard on us. Let's put it that way this year. I haven't sold near as much Bill Bars. But I still sold some, enough to get me a Stanley and a $50 gift card. So I'll take it, and I'm heading into Target.
through. You can see my compression underneath. That's kinda cute. Oh. Maybe I need a bigger size. I didn't realize it would be so gappy. And it doesn't really have a zipper. Interesting. These are a 10. Cute though. Wow, this is kind of huge. I thought it was going to be super cute. It's the only size they had it was an extra large, and it's just a little too extra for me. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. on the the uh, corduroy pants but I didn't like any of the other things I picked up couldn't find anything else um, I went over the makeup and it was all completely like a disastrous mess couldn't find anything and they didn't have anything that I was looking for and nothing that looked appealing so I didn't buy any makeup I checked all the jewelry I didn't like any of the jewelry well I had one pair of earrings I liked but it was 20 bucks for one pair and I didn't feel like it was worth it so I didn't get the jewelry and so then I went back over to buy the linen pants in size 12 instead of 10 and all I had was 14 and 10. So I ended up buying the pants and a little $5 tray for my bathroom counter. <laughs> and I still have 15 bucks left on the card. All right, now for the test though. I've been in there for over an hour. Is it still too hot to drink? Ah, uh, yep. Nice. <laughs> Okay, so I just wanted to kind of clarify that clip that I did of my food from the party. As I talked about this morning when I was heading into Target, I was doing one meal a day so that I could eat all 1,300 of my calories um, in this one meal. And I went over, I think, like 72, something like that, because the brownie that I originally tracked ended up being less calories than the brownie I made. I ended up using the Duncan Hines one. So that was... A Duncan Hines Keto Brownie and some of my Jello Fluff that I make. I have the recipe somewhere here on my channel, but I don't know where, but it's basically whipped cream, sugar-free Jello, whipped up, and then I fold in rinsed and patted dried cottage cheese to give it kind of, you know, some texture. Um, then I also had peas and some, three tomatoes and my wings. I had nine chicken wings. I didn't eat any of the ranch and I just dipped them in the hot sauce. Didn't eat any of the carrots or the celery. Yep. So that was my one and only meal for Saturday. On to tomorrow.
Alrighty guys, so there's the first week of my 2023 keto cut and it was pretty crazy. <laughs> um, it, I, it went exactly as I predicted it would. The 1300 calories was absolutely miserable. I did not enjoy it. I was starving to death. I had to drink a lot of like Creo brew during the day to keep myself from not um, being hungry. In the past, I've always been able to drink like bang soda or Coke, um, things like that, just sodas to keep me, cause it has like, caffeine has kind of a appetite suppressant, it keeps me not as hungry. But sadly on my ADHD medication, I am not supposed to be having very much caffeine. So I have to cut way back on my caffeine consumption. I do sometimes still drink those things, just not as many as I was drinking before. Pre-Ritalin, I was drinking two bang sodas a day and probably at least 32 ounces of Coke. A lot of caffeine in order to just cope with my life. Found out later that that's an ADHD thing. I would drink a bang if I wanted to before bed and it would put me right to sleep. That should have been a clue number billion that I have ADHD and I'm still wrapping my brain around all of that. I'm really in still kind of the anger and denial mode. Um, having frustrations with myself, but I'm working through that with my therapist and I have the Woe, what's it called? The, the Woe Bot app. If you guys struggle with anxiety, depression, or just negative thoughts, there is a, an app called the Woe Bot. It is W-O-E-B-O-T. I am not sponsored by these guys, but it has a little robot that will talk to you and kind of like talk you through your, um, behavioral therapy, your um, cognitive, cognitive behavioral therapy, where you kind of like take your negative thoughts and you flip them around and you try and have positive thoughts. Anyway, it's a good app, it's helping me, um, but I still struggle every single day. It's just how it is. And so because of that, I really struggled being, being kind of angry about having to be on a diet and being kind of grumpy this first week. Let's be real. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. Dieting is never easy. It was a lot easier when I was obese. I was super hyper motivated, um, super excited to watch myself get smaller and really not that hungry because I had a lot of body fat to burn. Now I just don't have as much as I, my body feel comfortable like not making me hungry. My body does not agree with me that I should eat 1300 calories and so I'm trying to convince it otherwise, which is difficult, but I did it. I did it. So let's go over my calories. I know you probably already saw them in the video if I put them in. Honestly, I don't know if I'm gonna do that this time, but I I, I have them here. So um, January 2nd was 1,314 calories, then January 3rd, 1301, and then 1317, 1317, 1300, 1346, I'm not exactly sure what happened that day, and 1315 for an average of 1316 calories, which is right in line of what I was hoping to have. Um, my protein average for the week was 134, which is perfection. My carbs average for the week was 17, and my fats average for the week was 73. So the macros of 134 protein, 17 net carbs, and 73 fat is perfect for what my macros are for weight loss. And the scale definitely cooperated, which we all knew it would. That first week is always misleading because the huge water weight whoosh. And I all I had to make sure that it was on top of my electrolytes really, really well. But electrolytes are still super difficult to manage. I have still struggled getting all the sodium in. I am not in the habit of it anymore. And doing my sole water four times a day wasn't always the best. And I don't even have any magnesium on hand. And I drank some perfect keto electrolytes to try and boost the magnesium and potassium. Um, because I have those on hand, but it's been kind of a crapshoot with the electrolytes trying to keep up with this giant whoosh. So I whooshed from 204.6 all the way down to 195.4. These were my weights, 204.6, 201, 200.2, 198.6, 198.4, 197.8, and 195.4 for an average of 199.4. Now, if you go by the few weights that I did last week, my average weight was 203, so that's about a three pound loss in a week when you go by average, but it looks a lot more dramatic than that when you just watch the scale drop, which is why I do average weights. So I don't get excited, too excited too quickly, and I don't get ahead of myself, and then I don't get discouraged when the weight goes up 
every once in a while because it will. Coming into this next week, I'll probably be ovulating or maybe coming close to it. You just never know. And I always struggle when hormonal changes happen in my body. I tend to hold water even before the lymphedema, but since the surgery, it's so much worse. <laughs> So I think that the weigh-ins went really well. And so you saw my exercise classes. Pretty soon we're gonna get started with our choreography for our spring program. We haven't quite started yet. We didn't have lyrical this week because we didn't. We had the day off still of dance on Monday. So all I had here was clogging, but trust me, there's lots more dancing to come and you don't wanna miss it. So if you wanna watch my cut and see how it goes, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any videos. I know that these aren't popping up in people's feeds very well because I haven't been putting out videos so the more you can interact with the video, if you're here, the likes, comments, sharing it if you feel like it, or just, you know, coming back every once in a while, coming back more often to check on my channel, that's really gonna help me kind of get back into the algorithm and get myself back on track for YouTube. So thank you so much for watching this video. I love you guys all so much, and we'll talk to you all again soon.